Hello everybody, this is Shannon and I am a communications, digital marketing, and e-commerce specialist. Today we are going to go over creating items in your Square Online store. So a big mistake that a lot of people make is having items in their Square inventory and thinking that that automatically translates right over to your online. Unfortunately, that is not the case and you do have to enter your online items uh, separately um, aside from the stockpile that you already have in your square on your square inventory already. So anyways, we're going to go through that today. Um, and it's a very important part if you want to sell your product on your square online store. So as always, we will start in the square online dashboard. To get there, you log into your square account and from the sidebar menu on the left hand side, you go from website right to online. Alrighty, so we're going to get started. From Square Online Dashboard, you go right over to Items. And on here, you're going to go to Site Items. When you click on Site Items, it is going to take you to Item Library. And as you can tell, um, and with my previous videos, my online library is mostly services. So this is just going to be a joke, um, basically just a little trial, but we're going to go to Add Item. So, what is my item? It is a physical item. And my item title is going to be potato. The price of my potato is going to be $5. Now the sales price right here is only if you want to have a sale on that specific item. So say the base price of my potato was $5 and I wanted to have it on sale for a limited time for $3. I would enter $3 here. However, that's not the case. I want to stick with the $5. So I need to add my description. Basically, put a little catchy, little uh, quick snippet of what your item is. So I'm just going to put a brown potato. Perfect for boiling, um, frying, or mashing. <laughs> Okay, perfect. So then drag images here or click to upload. So what we're going to do is we're going to upload some pictures here. So we go potato. Hit the first one, command, and the second one, open. So we're going to put two images here. And basically what you want to do is you want to have as many product images as possible to display all the different angles and different sizes and everything or different color concepts for your product. And then if you want to have one as the main image, you would drag that right up here to the top. Replace image. We're going to make this the main image, obviously. Perfect. So we have our two images right here. We're going to scroll down. This is pretty straightforward. Um, visibility. We want to have this product visible for people to purchase on the website. However, if you want to have it as a hidden product and then upload it later for people to see and purchase, you can do it that. Or you can make unavailable or it will still present on your dashboard on your website. However, people will not be able to purchase it. So you go down. Fulfillment method. So are you going to ship your product? Are you going to allow for local pickup? Are you going to allow for local delivery or self-serve ordering? Typically, you can do shipping, pickup, local delivery, whatever you want. For this, I'm going to do shipping. And say our potato weighs 5 kilograms. I don't know if any potato would weigh 5 kilograms, but this works. Um, you can make it so your per, this individual item is t tax exempt, meaning that people don't have to pay taxes on it. That is up to the discretion of the client or the uh, business owner, essentially. So like if you want to do that, you totally can. Um, and then we get down to stock. So if you don't have a stock keeping, a specific um, skew stock keeping method, my general rule of thumb that I go with all of my clients is the 1001 method. So to go with this, I can make a whole video on this itself, but for the first product, I do 1001. If I have variants, I do 1002, 1003, and so forth. And then for the next product that I'd add, so say I added a carrot to go with my potato, the SKU for the, the carrot would then be 2001, and then the next product that I add would be 3001. There really is no method to this madness. You can do whatever you want, but that is just the rule of thumb for me and is generally what I get my clients to do. It just it's a little bit easier. So if we go here, it says that I have no stock. Oh no, 
we need to add stock. So we're going to go to save here. And what this is going to do is it's going to bring you in to add your stock. So then you're always, you're usually always going to get this unavailable message. You're going to hit edit and square. And apparently it's not going to work for us today, but typically what would happen is it'll give you the option to enter it and to track your, um, to track your inventory. What you'll do is you'll go ahead and you'll select the reason for re recounting the inventory. And I always say recount inventory or inventory recount, enter your amount of inventory, hit save, and you should be good to go. Sometimes it'll give you that message. Um, I find with Square, you kind of have trial and error where you have to keep saving, keep coming back to enter your stock. It is a little bit tedious and annoying, but you know what? Say la vie. It's not the worst thing that could happen. So if you have any variation, so say if I had a yellow potato that I wanted to add, you could go here. So let's say I'm going to add a variation. My variation is potato type. Done. So this is regular. Oh goodness, potato type. So we're going to do yellow potato. And for regular, it's going to be brown potato. Done. Okay, so how many of each do I have? The yellow potato is going to be the same price. The SKU for this is going to be 1002 because it is a variation and it also weighs five kilograms. So when we get into the the nitty gritty here with the stock, we'll be able to go in and edit both. But for the time being, that is how you enter a variant. I could make the yellow potato $10 if I wanted to, but I'm, yeah, you know what, I will do that. So we hit save. So say I want somebody to engrave something on the potato. I want to make it, <laughs> I want to make an option for someone to make an engraved note on the potato. So how do I do that? Well, that is a modifier. So if you have a product that needs some sort of customization, um, if you want to get people to make a note card to go with their order or something like that, you can do that here. So this is a modifier. So how you will do this, create your first modifier. What you'll do, um, you can do selecting from a list or typing text into a text box. So what I'm going to do is I want people to tell me what they want engraved on their potato. So you're going to go do typing text into a text box, text box label, engrave your potato and the character limit, the max is 150. Um, you can't do any more than that. And I'm going to not make this a required field. However, you can, it will prompt your, um, your customers to be required to fill this out. You don't have to though. So I'm not going to hit save. All right. So engrave the potato. Awesome. Perfect. And I'm going to go up again and see if I can mess with the stock just to see if it will work and it might not work. We shall see. Save. Alrighty. So stock, you want to track the stock, right? Go here. Stock received inventory recount. I always do inv inventory recount. Say we have a hundred potatoes update stock. Perfect. So now it's saying we have 100 potatoes. We're going to save that call it a day. Now, how does that look on my website? I will quickly show you. So we're going to go to website. We've got to go to edit website. And once it loads, it's going to go here. All right, perfect. So in item in item pages, so we want to see what the item page looks like. Go to potato. Beautiful. This is what it looks like. All right. Perfect. So it says that the price range is from $5 to 10. And that goes between yellow and brown potato. So if I want a yellow potato, that's going to be $10. Engrave my potato. And then I'd enter it here. Quick shipping, add to cart. You get the rest. You've been in online shopping before. So that's basically the summary of Cliff Notes of how to add an item to your page on your store for shop for square. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to comment below. Make sure to like and subscribe and I will be delivering some more content like this because I know it is helpful for those of you that are trying to make your site. And yeah, so if you need anything, let me know and thank you so much for watching.